Well, thanks very much, Alex. And uh, let me be the first tonight to congratulate you on behalf of all of us in the room on your appointment as the head of Catalyst Canada. She did a terrific job in her debut and we're all looking forward to continuing to revolutionize Canadian business and the landscape with you. I'll reserve my comments about your predecessor until a little later in the evening. <laughs> Good evening everyone and let me add my own welcome to the Catalyst Canada Honours 2012 dinner. Because Catalyst is headquartered in New York, they were impacted heavily by last week's hurricane and I just want to acknowledge that and as well that the team has rallied and been operating very well with almost no resources. Catalyst and the company I work for have developed an enduring partnership based on shared objectives and it's a special privilege to represent BMO as chair of the Honours Dinner again this year. On behalf of Catalyst, we're delighted that so many CEOs and community leaders could join us. It makes a strong case, a strong statement rather, about the business case for diversity and it's fitting recognition as we honor four champions of women in business. To everyone here this evening, thank you for supporting the work of Catalyst, an organization that's without equal when it comes to rigorous benchmarking and ensuring we're deliberate in our thinking about the advancement of women. The leaders here tonight, representing over 90 companies, are here not to stand up for a cause, but as enablers who know it's time to accelerate the agenda. Tonight, we pay tribute to four exceptional and influential role models who are accelerating the agenda and who understand that there can't be any debate over the interpretation of what that means. The video we've just seen provides only a brief glimpse of the work of Catalyst and what it does to change mindsets and the critical role it plays in sponsoring women to advancement. It also confirms why we simply can't lose focus. I doubt any one of us here tonight believes that things are as they should be. During the course of the evening, we'll hear firsthand from the people who categorically don't think that they are and have done and continue to do important work to correct this imbalance in corporate Canada. It's a fact, long past debate, that all businesses are enhanced by diversity and gender equity. Talent and performance, not gender, racial background, or physical abilities are what defines success. It's been 20 years since BMO published the report of its task force on the advancement of women, also known as the bottom line. In it, Tony Comper wrote that the glass ceiling is now officially smashed. Let's all rise to the occasion, he said. Well, it was groundbreaking work, not just for BMO, but for corporate Canada as well. After two decades, it would be tempting to say that we've arrived and that we've reached the end of the job. But our work, and it's all of our work, isn't close to being done. Promoting diversity, working at it, making sure that no one can fall behind requires a never-ending commitment. As a recipient of the 1994 Catalyst Award, BMO was the first Canadian company to receive such an honor. And at the time, we were very grateful for the recognition and for the opportunity to be at the forefront in promoting diversity and inclusion. But to us, there was no more fitting way to mark the 20-year milestone than to renew our commitment to create an equitable workplace for all employees and take tangible steps to do so. It's why BMO is an early signatory to the Catalyst Accord, an initiative that encourages corporate Canada to increase representation of women on boards of directors and the board of directors of our bank, led by Rob Pritchard, the chairman, took the accord one step further and committed to publish targets that have been adopted in the 2013 proxy. Currently, only 14.5% of board seats in corporate Canada are held by women. 40% of Canadian public companies have no women on their boards. Taking clear steps to ensure gender diversity in the boardroom is a business priority and it should be a source of national pride. This week, we're also announcing a $500,000 commitment, which we'll invest with Catalyst to establish a first-of-its-kind learning program, an inclusive leadership practice center that will help accelerate the levels of diversity and inclusion in all businesses 
by equipping their organizations with the necessary knowledge to develop and sustain in-house employee resource groups. Today, employee resource groups can be found in many FP500 and Fortune 500 companies and are important engines of employee engagement and business results. We think that not enough attention has been paid to these leaders who head up diversity councils and affinity groups, yet they are their own company's catalysts. The Banks Institute for Learning will be a flagship location for in-person training and certification for these emerging leaders from companies across the globe. Both the Catalyst Accord and the Inclusive Leadership Practice Center are a testament to Deborah Gillis and Eileen Lang's incredible leadership and vision. They see possibilities and they act. And we join them and we hope you will too. Still, none of these strategies is more powerful to my mind than the concept of being a champion. And it's champions that we're celebrating tonight. The men and women we're honoring this evening are individuals who've done more and continue to do more. They use their influence to not just promote equity, but also help everyone make progress. When you get right down to it, being a champion is the most powerful form of leadership, and such leaders deserve to be recognized. The Catalyst, Catalyst organization itself benefits from having a number of such powerful leaders, individuals who are showing us the way. On your behalf, I want to acknowledge three of those who are here tonight. The first is Deborah Gillis, newly appointed Chief Operating Officer for Catalyst Inc. and the force behind building Catalyst Canada to where we are today. And if you look around this room, three years ago, our first dinner, I think there was just about eight of us at a small table in the corner. <laughs> She's a gifted and natural leader, courageous and balanced in the pursuit of fundamental change. Deborah will be more formally introduced to speak to us after dinner, but having had the opportunity to work with her as the head of Catalyst Canada, as a potential candidate for the Canadian House of Commons, and you would have been a great parliamentarian, and most recently as the SV Global, SVP Global Operations, I want to single Deborah out to congratulate her, thank her, and tell her we're all with her for the next stage. I don't think that's the last round of applause you'll be receiving tonight. I also want to acknowledge Jim Turley, who's chair and CEO of Ernst & Young, and who I've known since 2001, about the time that he joined Catalyst Board. Jim has done an outstanding job as the chairman of Catalyst Inc. since 2009, and this is his, I believe, second consecutive year that he's been here for the Catalyst Canada Dinner. Jim, uh, welcome, and thanks very much for coming. And now I'd like to introduce Eileen Lang, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Catalyst Inc., who is going to come and join me at the podium. Eileen was appointed President of Catalyst in 2003 and became CEO four years ago. And she has put her own distinctive mark on Catalyst, on the mission, including transforming what was a North American mandate into a global enterprise. And she's done that by redefining board governance, conceiving innovative strategies for advancing women, devising better ways to promote work-life effectiveness. And these are all things that people turn to Eileen for when they want guidance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eileen Lang to the podium. <laughs> 